Hello and welcome to the Hooniverse and to a new year and of course to History of Who, the third series of videos where I dive into the timelines of famous and unfamiliar faces from the Doctor Who universe. Now over the years I've talked about everything from Forgotten Time Lords, Shapeshifters, The Silence and staples of our sci-fi screens. Now through this time I've learned a lot about video making and looking back at the older videos they don't do some of these icons justice. And of course, these characters don't sit still either, with more evil schemes started or stopped, worlds saved or conquered. It's always changing and it's about time that I caught up. So, here is the super updated and upgraded version of your favourite History of Who video, so grab some snacks and a comfy chair as this is the ultimate History of the Daleks. Half a universe away from Earth, the 12th planet in a solar system of the 14th galaxy, was a world called Skaro, a planet once home to the early thinkers and philosophers called Fowls and a race of scientists and survivors, the Khalids. However, this peaceful planet, like all worlds given enough time and torment, was ravaged by conflict. This wasn't a light skirmish, no. This was the Thousand Year War. A battle that started so long ago, the reason for the fighting has been lost to the winds of time itself. There are scraps of information in this storm that suggest it started from the jealousy of the Khalids over the construction of the Foul City, which somehow stemmed into a cold war of sorts, which soon heated up into the roaring flame of duty, destruction and death. Now during this war, the planet was practically destroyed, the two forces each retreating to domed citadels overlooking a polluted wasteland, marked by discarded war machines, corpses and minefields. Imagine the mud and misery of no man's land and sprinkle tons and tons of nuclear radiation on top. This world's wildlife was changed forever too. Most of Skyro's animal and plant life became extinct as a result of the centuries of conflict, with the only survivors being those cruel or cunning enough to adapt. Towards the end of this gruesome great war, a child was born, spawned from an adulterous relationship between two Khaled politicians. This child would dream of being a scientist and not a soldier, one day finding himself wandering the fields of Skaro's battlefields. Alone without hope, watching soldiers slaughtered by the sick creations known as hand mines, corpses that kill. This was a time without mercy, without the ideal of aid or help. The child feared death, but was saved by a stranger and his magical blue box. The Doctor, in his twelfth incarnation, saved the child. He showed mercy to the boy who would become a man without mercy. The creator of the Daleks, Davros. Davros grew as the planet continued to turn, the turmoil of war growing worse and worse. He read and studied sciences and was drawn in by prophecies of the future. Now, One prophecy found in the Forbidden Book of Predictions, written in the extinct language of the Daos, stated, and on that day, men will become as gods. Gods, these mythical legends that survive anything, see everything and rise above the mud and the misery of petty conflict. A god, that's what Davros needed. The word god, the final word in this grand prophecy, was pronounced in this ancient language simply as Dalek. As the years passed, Davros, now a man, disagreed with the ideas of his half-sister Yarvel, who had become a peace activist of a compromise with the Fowls. As he approached his 30th birthday, he decided the only satisfactory outcome of the war as being the extermination of the Fowls and the complete dominance of the Khalids over all of Skaro. Due to his great mind, he was forced into the military corps, put in charge of developing new weapons and gadgets to help Khaled soldiers. It was during this time his mother killed his father, sister and aunt. Davros no longer had anyone to impress or to hold him back. In honour of Yarvel's death, he and his mother commissioned a statue to house her ashes. However, in reality, Davros used her body for his genetic research. One month later, after the death of his mother, Davros was horrifically wounded by a foul bombardment of his laboratory, which cost him his taste buds, his left arm, an entire lower body, and left his eyes with severe damage to the point where using them would cause severe pain. As a result, he was forced to spend the rest of his life confined to a mobile life support system, attached to a wheelchair and an eye stalk type bulb in his forehead, giving him partial eyesight without the use of his own organic eyes. Davros was so worn, so weathered and so weary that he had effectively identified as a mutant. He was one of the oldest surviving creatures on Skaro at this stage. He worked with his equally ruthless aide, Nida, and ascended to a high rank in the Khaled scientific elite. 
having foreseen that over time the Khalids would mutate and degenerate into mutants who could not live on their own, Davros set about accelerating this evolution. He made alterations of his own to the Khalid mutant genome, filtering out qualities Davros deemed weak to make his creations the ultimate warriors. He altered their genetics to a point where the Khaled mutants would never die of old age, instead they would use every fibre of their being to survive and kill anything that did not identify as what they had become. However, these creatures would still be cut down by the radiation of the planet's surface and lacked the ability to pose a real threat in their current form. That is, until Davros crafted travel machines for these mutants, much like his own chair, but developed further with the materials more advanced, the armour intent on being invincible even in this most primitive state, the weaponry formidable, and a form that would be feared throughout the cosmos as Davros' creation was revealed. Skaro's gods were among them. The Daleks were born. Upon their activation, the Daleks exterminated NIDA, however Davros soon became their next victim, ironically because of the programming that he himself had given them, to exterminate all those who were not pure Dalek. He begged them to pity on him, but they stated that they were incapable of doing so, as he had not programmed them to feel pity. Davros was exterminated. Or so it would appear for now, by the first ever Dalek, the Dalek Prime. It was at this time the fourth Doctor was transported to this time period itself by the future Time Lords of Gallifrey, with the aim to prevent the possible future where the Daleks would rule the universe. The Doctor was given the chance to destroy the first incubating Dalek embryos, but feared that he had not the moral right to wipe out an entire species of sentient life forms from history, never mind how infamous they were about to become. The Doctor nevertheless played a part in entombing these early Daleks in their bunker, from which he hoped it would take them centuries to escape. The Daleks survived and vowed to re-emerge. With Davros forgotten, the Dalek Prime ruled over the species, adjusting the genome further with more mutations and monstrous ideas added to the Dalek's DNA. Firstly tested on itself, with the Dalek Prime reaching the early peak of mutated evolution. When the demonic creatures re-emerged, the Dalek Prime was now the Dalek Emperor. The Pepper Potts planned to create a city, an iconic set of structures full of challenging architecture, which they achieved within two months. As a safety precaution, the Daleks also magnetised the metallic sand surrounding the city, allowing them to pull it towards the city at will, covering it in a large dune that concealed it from unwanted visitors. Now, Originally the Dalek Prime and the Black Dalek Leader officially held the offices of Dalek Emperor and Warlord, respectively. On the basis of an election, every Skaro year, all Dalek commanders would convene in the Dalek city and choose whether to re-elect their two leaders. Still, the two squid-like mutants held office as the planet was visited by a Kratorian spacecraft, piloted by the slave trader Kest, who was here to mine the metallic sand. He soon uncovered the Dalek city, and the Daleks decided to take advantage of this, to steal the secrets of space travel from him. Though his ship managed to escape Skaro, the Daleks were undeterred, and in possession of its schematics, set about crafting spaceships of their own. The work was delayed by the lack of available materials, as space travel demanded that the ships withstand heat and elements greater than what ordinary Dalekanium could bear. A scientist Dalek Zeg accidentally discovered a new and stronger alloy, Metalert, which could withstand a sun's heat. As his casing has been the first thing transmuted to Metalert, he became immune to the other Daleks' death rays and boasting that he was invincible, demanded to be made Emperor. Understandably, the original Emperor tried to have Zeg destroyed by the Black Dalek leader's superior firepower, but Zeg survived even that. They went to the Brain Machine, who ordered that the Golden Emperor and Zeg duel for the title. After numerous failed attempts, the Emperor succeeded in killing Zeg, using liquid air, which was 312 degrees below freezing. From the ruins of Zeg's casing, the Emperor acquired the secrets of Metalert, but later declared that it was still flawed, and they were not ready to build flying machines just yet. When the Doctor first encountered them in his own personal timeline, the Daleks were stranded in their city on Skaro, as their casings were now powered by static electricity, channelled by the metal floors of the city, preventing them from ever leaving it. They eventually found that the Fowls had also survived what was known as the Neutronic War. 
Instead of nuclear weapons, which wipes out everything and coats it in a harmful radiation, a neutron bomb has a similar effect, but only targets organic tissue. So, after discovering that they had become dependent on the background radiation to the point of the anti-radiation meds, Susan gave them to be lethal, the Daleks attempted to vent radiation from their nuclear reactors into the atmosphere, which would have left them the only living species on Skaro. The first Doctor and his companions led a foul assault and deactivated their power, believing that he had wiped out the Daleks altogether in the process. Oh Doctor, how naive you were. You can't keep a good Dalek down for long, the squids from Skaro survived and with knowledge that time travel now existed, and a foe that could actually defeat them, the Daleks were more determined than ever. Still led by the Golden Emperor alongside the Dalek Council, the Daleks finally perfected the Dalek Flying Saucer and began a master plan to forge an interstellar Dalek Empire. Their first target being Alvega, the planet closest to Skaro. There they faced opposition from its plant-like inhabitants, the Amaryllis. In the end, a scouting party of Daleks had to be sent to the planet's core to destroy it, which led to the explosion of the entire planet with the Emperor observing that what we cannot conquer, we destroy. Now landing on Solturus, the Emperor claimed to come in peace and gained the trust of the planet's ruler Redlin. Learning that the planet had a defensive weapon, the Pentaray, the Emperor had a fake created and smuggled it into the capital city as the Daleks made off with the real Pentaray. Confident of victory, the Emperor left the planet to attend the other conquests, while leaving two Dalek ships behind to monitor the situation. Shortly after, the Emperor learnt the Solturans had reclaimed the Pentaray, decimating the Dalek forces on the planet. The Daleks had lost, but the Emperor had his attention drawn away by a message calling him back to Skaro. The Emperor returned to their home planet, where he found that a radioactive cloud of rust was wreaking havoc upon the Daleks, eating away their outer casing in a matter of minutes. Fear of this plague led to the Daleks attacking each other while the Emperor determined that it was carried unintentionally by the Black Dalek leader. Though the Black Dalek intended to sacrifice himself for the good of the Dalek Empire, the Emperor deemed that his loss would have been unacceptable, and so had his casing reconstructed while the Daleks worked to cure the plague. However, this sentimentality or tactical thinking left the Daleks open for an attack, their defences at their lowest since the Thousand Year War began all those years prior. A monstrous spacecraft had landed on Skaro, and the Emperor could only watch as the Monstrans sent their soldiers to attack the Dalek city, entombing it in liquid metal. The Emperor still survived, saved from an electric eel by the Dalek's magnetizer. Using the eel's electricity, the Emperor was able to fend off the invaders, preventing more damage and realising that creatures may pose more resistance than they first imagined. It was shortly after rebuilding their great city, the Daleks attempted to take over another planet, Auric which they intended to mine for precious metals. However, the Daleks were attacked by the Mechanoids, who first tried to defeat the Daleks covertly by turning them on each other with suspicion rays before being discovered. The Mechanoids proceeded to wage war on the Daleks at full force, declaring themselves supreme and pledging to come to Skaro and destroy it. In dire desperation for any edge against the Mechanoids, the Daleks scoured the skies for any weapons or inventions to use to defeat their enemies, if and when they finally came to Skaro. So, the Daleks had defeated rust viruses and invaders, but with the Mechanoids closing in, another problem arose, as they had to deal with the threat of the rogue planet. Skardal, a seemingly indestructible astral body, set on a collision course for Skaro itself. But sometimes, the problem is the solution in disguise. Choosing to kill two space birds with one stone, the Golden Emperor found a way to divert the planet's course and send it in the direction of the mechanoid's home planet. However, while trying to disintegrate a dangerous warhead before it landed on their planet, the Daleks actually ended up accidentally destroying Skardel before it even hit the mechanoids. By then, the Android 2K had been sent by the Zerovians to avert a war between the Daleks and the Mechanoids, which the Zerovians believed would be disastrous for them in the long run, as whichever of the two powers survived would be able to turn its unmitigated attention towards the conquest of their planet Zeros. 
The robot managed to trick the mechanoids into believing that destroying the rogue planet had been an intentional declaration of non-aggression from the Daleks, thus averting the war. A conflict that could have ultimately changed the course of the universe with the history of the Daleks, ending here if not for peace talks. The Daleks decided that to ensure they never faced an extinction event like the war that never was, they had to discover other threats to eliminate them before they could even attack. This is why they created the Reconnaissance Scout Daleks, a special breed of mutants topped off with the latest abilities and fast thinking. One of these scouts was sent to Earth in the 9th century. It took armadas and enemies to come together to defeat this single Dalek, with the humans' primitive weapons no match at first against the single Dalek's death ray. To the surprise of the universe, the humans won. Hacking the mutant into three pieces and hiding the thirds of distinctively different parts of the globe. This Dalek reawakened centuries later in 2019, but was defeated by the 13th Doctor and her fam, meaning the first scout to reach Earth was unable to tell the rest of the Daleks of its location. However, fast forward around a year and the remaining cells of the Dalek mutant left inside the casing from the GCHQ attack were recreated and then duplicated on a huge scale. Thousands of Dalek mutants created fed on liquidized human beings and placed inside 3D printed cases. This was all part of a government security plan gone wrong. The 13th Doctor returned to stop them with the greatest fire in the universe, more Daleks. Specifically, Death Squad Daleks. These Skyrolings were big on purity and deemed these new Daleks impure and exterminated them all. The Doctor then used a decoy TARDIS to capture all the remaining Death Squad Daleks and crush them, while sending the dying ship into the heart of the void. Meanwhile, Captain Jack Harkness destroyed the Death Squad ship, and Gwen Cooper even stopped the Dalek with a moped and some boxing gloves. The Daleks on Skaro, all those galaxies away back in time, still discovered the blue planet with a human spaceship crashing onto Skaro. Though three of the humans managed to make it back home alive, they left behind a scrap of paper with Earth's coordinates, leading the Daleks to decide to conquer the planet Earth once and for all. Fast forward and the Dalek invasion force led by the Black Dalek, who had now become known as the Supreme Controller, and each saucer was under the command of a Dalek saucer commander, was successful and maintained the occupation of Earth for some time in the 22nd century. The Sixth Doctor foiled the plan to unleash a Varga plant virus in the year 2163 and erased any record of his involvement afterwards, as he knew his past would catch up with him and the Daleks soon enough, in a very literal sense. So the invasion continued, and the Daleks commenced a mining operation in Bedfordshire in order to reach the Earth's magnetic core, replacing it with a propulsion system and turn the whole planet into a massive spacecraft ready to wage war across the cosmos. Sometime after their takeover of Earth, the first Doctor foiled the plan before its completion. The pit they had dug turned into an active volcano, the eruption of which killed the remaining Daleks and destroyed their base. However, as always, the Daleks survived. A research facility named DA-17 remained intact. Luckily, the Eighth Doctor and his granddaughter Susan were there to try and stop them, but soon were trapped along with the Master and new Daleks were produced by the hatchery. They attempted to conquer England, but were destroyed when DA-17 was set to explode. It took three Doctors and a lot of work, but the Earth was saved once more. The Daleks aimed to grow stronger, improving their travel machines and removing the need for static electricity. The forces of Skaro set their crosshairs on planet Earth continuously, attempting to invade around this time. From the Dalek time controller from the far future, failing to turn Earth into a plague planet, to the Dalek Emperor feeling so threatened it began ordering a Dalek invasion of the solar system, with Earth as their prime target. This was because as the humans had created colonies on Mars and Venus, the Emperor could only imagine the disaster that they might try to land on Skaro too. The second invasion attempt, or straight war, which pitted the humans against the Daleks ended in the weirdest way possible. A peace treaty. The Dalek Emperor even announcing on a broadcast to all life forms that the Dalek race would not leave Skaro ever again. This shocking peace lasted for all of 200 years, when a mysterious mechanical planet came into existence which threatened both Skaro and Earth. The Emperor landed on Earth and made an offer to eliminate the threat in exchange for the return of confiscated Dalek weaponry, which the humans hesitantly accepted. Ultimately, the Daleks destroyed the mechanical planet, and with their weapons and power restored, the Emperor vowed to conquer all the planets in every sky once again. 
This was not a time for peace. No, this was the Daleks' time for power. The Daleks allied with the Master to undermine the Earth and Draconian Empire and set them against each other and then take over with a huge army assembled on Spiridon. This was known as Operation Divide and Conquer. Despite the Master's failure to cause war, the army was prepared and the Daleks looked forward to utilising the invisibility properties of Spiridon's inhabitants as a means of developing stealth technology. However, all of these plans were foiled when the Dalek army was frozen by the Third Doctor and a task force of fowls. Once the Earth and Draconian Empires learnt it was the Daleks disturbing the peace, war was declared on the Dalek Empire. It was during this the Daleks captured the Tenth and Fourth Doctors, who had been aboard the Cathedral of Contemplation and connected their minds to the building. The Doctors opened a door to Earth and the Supreme ordered the Daleks through to begin the surprise invasion. The Daleks were destroyed, as the Doctors had actually opened a door to the final destruction of Earth in 5.5 Apple 26. They abandoned the Supreme inside the Cathedral as it collapsed, unable to survive without the Abbess, who had been previously exterminated. It was also during the Second Dalek War, the Daleks used more advanced casings. Despite their efforts after decades of fighting, the Daleks found they were losing to the humans. They tried to use the Archeon Threshold, a rift in time above a planet they had destroyed decades earlier, planning to use the rift to wipe out humanity throughout time so that the human race would have never even existed. However, the Tenth Doctor joined forces with a crew of Dalek bounty hunters aboard a spaceship called the Wayfarer. He went toe to toe with the Dalek Inquisitor General Dalek X, who planned on torturing the Doctor and stealing the technology from the TARDIS, allowing use of the rift. The Doctor defeated the Daleks by tricking them into a mammoth explosion, putting a huge dent into the Dalek war machine and allowing the humans to finally win. It was after this war a Dalek saucer travelled to the planet Exelon. The Dalek task force encountered the third Doctor and his companion Sarah Jane Smith, along with a human expedition. They attempted to gun down the humans but discovered that the Exelon city had drained the power supplies rendering their usual weaponry useless. The Daleks replaced them with machine guns for this encounter and enslaved the Exelons in search for Perinium. When their power was restored, the Daleks revealed that they were the cause of the space plague and were about to fire plague missiles to kill the Exelons and the Doctor. As they made their getaway in their ship, however all this was destroyed by a human named Dan Galloway, who had stowed away on the ship with a Dalek bomb which he detonated. The Doctor was now solidified in the hive mind of the Daleks as an enemy of the Dalek race. Every time they came close to victory, a version of the Time Lord would get in the way. It was time for action, but for that they would need time travel. The Daleks allied themselves with the renegade Time Lord Shazar. Shazar gave them the knowledge and the means to build a fleet of battle TARDISes to conquer the galaxy and everything that ever was or ever will be. The Fourth Doctor and Sarah Jane Smith foiled the plan by having the Daleks damage their space station's cooling system as it was very close to a sun. They began to boil over with the heat, ripping the ships apart. Another Dalek fleet destroyed by the Doctor. This was the final straw. It was time to target the Doctor relentlessly. The Dalek Emperor, still in his prime, ordered the extermination of the first incarnation of the Doctor and his TARDIS team. The chase was on as the Doctor fled the Daleks throughout space and now time, as the Daleks had made a prototype time capsule. The Dalek execution squad was relentless, however was no match for the Doctor's cunning as he led the Daleks to the home planet of the Mechanoids one of Scaro's sworn enemies. Ultimately, not only was the entire Dalek execution force eliminated, but also the prototype time capsule was lost, as two of the Doctor's friends, Ian and Barbara, used it to return to London 1965. One group of Daleks found themselves in the 19th century still searching for the secrets to time travel, which were now granted by a human scientist. However, this decision was full of errors and led to the Daleks trying to trap the second Doctor, who aided the squids from Scaro in creating these free humanized Daleks. Showing the best of mankind in Dalek form, however, as these Daleks were created, each named Alpha, Beta, and Omega, the reverse was also revealed in the form of the Dalek Factor. 
which the Daleks aimed to spread throughout Earth's history, winning them the war against the humans before it even begun. Luckily, the Doctor caught on to the Dalek Emperor's scheme and reversed it, instead creating a fleet of human Daleks. The Civil War of Skaro had begun. The Daleks set about their space-based squabble exterminating each other with the pure Daleks fighting against these now impure humanized Daleks. The battles were long, but ultimately, the evil of the Daleks prevailed with the pure Daleks regrouping and restricting their formation with a new class of Dalek drone and a mighty supreme Dalek who were aided by Ogrons in an attempt to invade Earth once more in the 22nd century. This was ultimately put a stop to by the Third Doctor. Meanwhile, one of the three original human factor Daleks survived, the Alpha and his fleet of human Daleks escaped Skaro and settled on another world beneath the seabed. Here, they created their own culture, making art, meditating, and testing their psychic abilities. Were these good Daleks? We'll never really know, as Catophobus, a telepathic parasite, attempted to feed on the humanized Daleks, with this new subspecies finding the only way out as their own destruction, with the Eighth Doctor as witness. As time passed, the Daleks found themselves at war once more, in the year 4949. They fought against the robotic Mavalans with each side's logical thinking, so alike that no winner could be found. The two forces were stuck in a stalemate, a conflict the Twelfth Doctor used to his advantage in an effort to fight super alien engine oil alongside Nardole and Bill. This war needed a winner, so the Daleks returned to Skaro to find Davros. Yeah, but he was killed by the Daleks centuries ago. Or was he? Let's hit rewind, as the Dalek Prime had actually only damaged his primary life support system. The second and backup circuit switched on immediately, placing him in suspended animation while his life support worked to regenerate him. Did the Dalek Prime know this? Was the entire Dalek Empire and all their conquests so far built on a lie? Either way, with Davros and his biological mind, he could reprogram their battle computers to win the war. However, the fourth Doctor defeated them and the Mavellans, and the Mavellans had Davros taken by the Daleks' former slaves to stand trial. However, even without their creator, the war continued for another 90 years, until the Mavellans developed a Mavellan virus to defeat the Daleks. Its effects were immediate and devastating. Symptoms included loss of motor control and expulsion of whitish foamy substance from vents and seals in the Daleks' casing. The infrastructure of the Dalek Empire was so damaged by the virus, the Empire broke into factions and fled to distant parts of the universe to avoid infection and find a cure. Davros was rescued by a Supreme Dalek to develop a cure. Davros instead tried to use the virus to destroy the Daleks loyal to the Supreme Dalek, and subsequently developed Daleks completely loyal to him. It was during this time the Fifth Doctor tried to stop Davros for good, but couldn't kill him, lacking the power to do what was necessary. However, in a cruel twist of fate, Davros' colour tissue proved vulnerable to the virus, and he began to display symptoms before escaping captivity. The Daleks had been divided, but not quite conquered, so the sixth Doctor stepped in. Davros at this stage had escaped, he was alive. He attempted to create an army of new Daleks created from the cryogenically frozen bodies of the planet's people, with his first attempts on Necros foiled as the renegade Daleks loyal to the Dalek Supreme were called and imprisoned Davros as the Doctor escaped. However, the Doctor was the puppet master at play here. He rescued Davros before his execution, and after his attempt to create the Juggernauts based on the artillery possessed by the Mechanoids, instead the Doctor planted the seeds that would grow into Davros' desire to become the one true Dalek Emperor. The Imperial and Renegade Daleks, two unstoppable forces, came to confront one another once and for all, with them both heading to Earth in 1963 to claim the Hand of Omega. The two factions waged a lengthy battle at Shoreditch. Aided by the Special Weapons Dalek, the Imperial Daleks won, almost wiping out the Renegades aside from the Supreme. The Imperial Daleks took the Hand of Omega as the Seventh Doctor had planned all along. Davros, as Emperor of the Imperials, plotted to use this ancient Time Lord device to detonate the second son of the Daleks' homeworld, Skaro, with the Hand giving the Daleks the power of unlimited time travel similar to Gallifrey's Eye of Harmony. In the Imperial Daleks' time zone, he did so, causing the second sun to go supernova. This action, however, destroyed the planet Skaro and the Imperial fleet. Davros escaped in a pod just in time, while on Earth, the Doctor talked the last renegade Dalek, the Black Supreme Dalek, into self-destructing. 
The Doctor isn't known as the enemy of the Daleks for nothing, but isn't a monster. As following the destruction of Skaro, Dalek battle cruisers continued to protect the area of the galaxy where Skaro used to be, even though it was now desolate. The Doctor briefly visited this part of space after encountering peace-loving Daleks in an alternate universe and reflected on his actions. One Dalek ship crashed and burnt, falling through time to the planet Vulcan, where it lay for 300 years until a human scientist named Lesterson recovered the ship. Once activated, the surviving Daleks in the capsule decided to pose as obedient robotic servant drones, claiming to be the colonists' willing servants. The Daleks took advantage of the colonists' naive trust to establish a reproduction plant on a conveyor belt system with which to increase their numbers. The second Doctor eventually discovered these Daleks and destroyed them by turning the colony's power source against them, but not before the Daleks killed a vast number of the colony's inhabitants. News of Davros' escape pod and where he found himself were spread throughout the cosmos, as rumours every story differed. One had him face his own inner demons, while others had him search for his coloured mutant creations. The Daleks were of course his children. Meanwhile, the Daleks attempted to regroup and reform their empire, resistant to the heavy hand of extinction. Instead, their forces grew once more, with the Daleks launching over a thousand Dalek sources into the Time Vortex. However, a temporal extinction device was deployed in a time fissure by a Dalek vessel within the Time Vortex itself. This caused the Dalek time ships to be swamped by a tidal wave of temporal energy, trapping them. The surviving remains of the Dalek Empire, still not willing to accept defeat, attempted to invade planets including the Earth once more. Aided by the Dalek Time Controller, who accepted the inevitability of the events to come and the Doctor's involvement, the Dalek's history is so entangled with the Doctor's that his own death could unravel what could be perhaps their greatest victory. The Daleks could be Lords of Time, the Universe. Their forces grew in number, a world slaughtered and converted or cut down by the might of the empire that was forged in the bloods of many species that they dared to see through their eye stalks. It was only a matter of time before a race so mighty would be faced by the self-entitled custodians of time itself. No longer willing to observe the destruction from afar, the flame of war was lit but the Inferno would soon devour entire worlds and time periods. This was a conflict centuries in the making. The Daleks versus the Time Lords, the last great time war, had begun. For the humans on Earth, the Daleks appear to have simply vanished. Their attempted invasions finally over. Instead, the scary Scaralings had had a new target, Gallifrey, the home planet of the Doctor's people. This great battle would see the Daleks led by the Dalek Emperor and guided by the Time Strategist. The Daleks had to be more devious, more cunning, and ultimately more creative if they were to have a chance at victory. The Daleks would create separate squads outside the control of the Emperor, each to dream of new ideas and advancements beyond standard Dalek comprehension. These included the Cult of Skaro and the Volatix Cabal. Davros was even recruited by the Daleks in the early days of the war, with the mad creator constructing the perfect Dalek mutant, the Nightmare Child, who quickly went out of control. The child wanted to consume everything, so Davros lured it to the gates of Elysium to destroy it. With him on board, his command ship was swallowed by the child as it fell into the gates, as the Doctor failed to save him. Davros was believed to be dead once more. The war took heavy toll on every world and involved, with or without choice, condemned to suffer. People on planets killed and resurrected, only to be killed again. The war was so much greater than the thousand year war from which the Daleks had originally spawned. So much took place during this conflict, which lasted an amount of time that can never be measured. The Daleks attempted invasion after invasion, attack after attack, using all the weapons they could lay their attachments on. New Daleks were created of little purity, such as the Skaro degradations. Even the most noble and innocent were corrupted and made cruel. In the end, the question of who was the greater monster, was it Time Lord or Dalek, was one that was very difficult to answer. On the last day of the Time War, the Daleks broke the defences of Arcadia, Gallifrey's second city, and invaded it. Unable to breach the capital sky trenches, the Dalek fleet surrounded and bombarded Gallifrey with as much firepower as they could muster. The War Doctor planned to use a weapon known as the Moment to wipe out both the Time Lords and the Daleks. However, this option was not taken, 
and all 13 incarnations of the Doctor teamed up together to hide Gallifrey and the Time Lords in an unknown pocket universe, leaving the Dalek fleet to wipe each other out in the crossfire. To the rest of the universe, the result of this action would appear the same as if the moment had been used. Gallifrey disappeared, and the Daleks were finally destroyed forever. Right? Well, not exactly. As not only had some Daleks broke their genetic programming through the fear they felt with some of the coloured mutants using their travel machines to hide in the deepest, darkest corners of the universe, and are still running to this day, there was also a single Dalek that fell through time and crashed like a meteorite on the Ascension Islands. The Dalek lay in its burning crater for three days, screaming the entire time before it was retrieved. The Dalek was sold at private auction and passed through several hands over the next 50 years. In 2012, it was acquired by billionaire Henry Van Staten, who nicknamed it Metaltron. It attempted to contact the Daleks, but ultimately realised it was alone in the universe. This Dalek revived itself after coming into contact with the Artron energy of a time traveller's DNA, which was extrapolated from Rose Tyler, and began slaughtering the base's occupants. However, this Dalek didn't just absorb the energy, no, but also some of the genome of the Ninth Doctor's companion, causing the Dalek to change, to feel, to desire more than just death and destruction. Deeming itself impure, the Dalek committed suicide. Towards the end of the Last Great Time War, the Daleks also sent a time capsule to 70 AD, Earth, in order to spread the Dalek factor amongst the humans and to use them to build more Daleks as a backup for the war. The capsule's engine failed during the trip and the Dalek inside ejected, crashing on Earth. It died shortly thereafter and released only a small amount of the Dalek factor, leading to only one in 500 million humans having it. The 10th Doctor discovered the dead shell which had been a Roman exhibit until the British threw it into some caves and gave the Dalek gun stick to Frank Openshaw. However, the unearthing of the Dalek activated the Dalek factor in Kate Yates, who developed a Dalek personality, and touched the dead casing, causing her Dalek life force to grow a new Dalek in the casing from the casing's databanks. The Dalek hunted down Frank and killed him to retrieve its gun arm, and then went on a rampage, killing many people before finding Kate. When the Doctor arrived, the Dalek offered the Doctor a deal. If he gave it a way to travel in time and space, it would spare Earth and go to another planet to rebuild its race and spread across the universe. If the Doctor refused, it would simply destroy the Earth. With no way to destroy the Dalek, the Doctor agreed to the deal and provided it with an old time ring he had stored on the TARDIS. The Dalek revealed its plan to be to travel to the year 500 million, where humanity was peaceful and had no knowledge of the Daleks. There, he'd get Kate to convince the humans to give it the materials it needed to rebuild its race. As the Dalek prepared to exterminate the Doctor, Rose reached out to Kate's human side, and after a mental struggle, Kate's human side regained control and she used her Dalek knowledge to set the time ring to self-destruct. The Dalek, trapped by Kate in a force field, it was caught in a warp implosion caused by the time ring. It self-destructed and was atomized. The Dalek factor in Kate then deactivated without the Dalek there to bring it back. You would think the Daleks were essentially gone for good at this stage. However, it was revealed the Dalek Emperor survived as well, the Inferno of the Time War's final days and fell through time in his damaged flagship. The Emperor influenced the fourth and great bountiful human empire as a cover for his plans. It rebuilt the Dalek race using human cells to create an army of just about half a million Daleks. It also built 200 flying saucers containing more than 2,000 Daleks each. The Emperor, having recreated the Dalek race, saw itself as an immortal god and so was literally worshipped by the new Daleks. These and other religious concepts such as blasphemy were all new to Dalek psychology. The Doctor realised that the Daleks hated their own existence since they were partially human. Additionally, they had been made mad by hundreds of years of solitude. Jack Harkness led a small human resistance to stop the Daleks aboard Satellite 5, which was also known as the Game Station. Meanwhile, the Ninth Doctor worked to create a Delta Wave to destroy the Daleks, but didn't have enough time to refine it so that it could distinguish between humans and Daleks. The Doctor decided to turn his chance down to use the Delta Wave, even though the Daleks had just bombed Earth heavily, wiping out entire continents. He couldn't be the killer again. The Emperor thought he was victorious, 
but he and his entire fleet were atomized by Rose Taylor after she had absorbed the energies of the Time Vortex and became the Bad Wolf. So, the Cult of Scaro, foreseeing a disastrous end on the Dalek side by the end of the Time War, built a void ship for themselves, which allowed them to hide away outside of the universe, in the void between parallel realities. They had also acquired a Time Lord prison ship, the Genesis Ark, which contained millions and millions of Daleks captured during the war. And as they leaked back into 21st century Earth, the Daleks were now far from extinct. However, they inadvertently allowed 5 million Cybermen from a parallel world to follow in the wake of the Void Ship and invade the Earth. After emerging from the Void Ship, the cult held Rose Tyler and Mickey Smith hostage, while Dalek they confronted the Cybermen. They turned down an offer of an alliance from the Cybermen, prompting the Cyber Leader to declare war on the Daleks. While the cult, confident in the ability of even one Dalek to destroy the inferior species, stated that he deemed the wiping out of the Cybermen to be nothing more than pest control. Sek then oversaw the pulling of the Ark out of its hibernation with the touch of a time traveller, allowing the liberated Daleks to fight the Cybermen, as well as human Torchwood One personnel, for dominion over the Earth in the Battle of Canary Wharf. Though the efforts of the 10th Doctor sent the majority of these Daleks back into the Void, where the Void was left barren and everything contained within it, perished. Now with the only four members of the Cult of Scaro themselves managing to escape through an emergency temporal shift. However, this battle would have a heavy cost on the Doctor, losing his friend, love, and ultimately the person who made him better than a warrior. The cult re-emerged in 1930 in New York City, where their first concern was to breed new Dalek embryos. However, they soon abandoned them to die in the sewers as they were not strong enough to succeed. This failure led Dalek Sek to determine that the Daleks' obsession with purity and supremacy had brought them to near extinction, and that the only way for the Daleks to survive was by forcing them to evolve. Sek created the human Daleks once more, even going so far as to splice his own body with that of a human ally of theirs, Mr. Diagoras. To do so, the cult infiltrated the construction of the Empire State Building and set up a transgenic laboratory, beneath it from which they planned to use Dalekanium placed on the mast as an energy conductor for gamma radiation from a solar flare to power the final experiment. The Doctor, weary of the Daleks' destruction, saw the potential to finally end the Time War, once and for all without a drop of blood spilt. No death or destruction, instead a new species would emerge, and all those lives lost would have purpose. However, the cult conspired against Sek and murdered the entire human Dalek race and their leader. Genocide. In the battle, Dalek Khan was the only survivor who escaped from the Doctor using his emergency temporal shift once more. Dalek Khan flew through time and space and saw the universe anew. He found Davros and saved him from the Nightmare Child, and as their creator used his own Khaled cells to form a fleet of Daleks stronger than ever, an army ready to end reality itself, stealing planets to form gears in the engine of the reality bomb. Khan had his own plans and showed the Doctor how he is the ultimate destruction of the Daleks and that the Daleks should be no more. It was during this attempt to take over Earth, as the final planet needed to make this machine work, the Dalek spared the life of a young Adelaide Brooke as it passed by her house, flying off to space. This inspired her to go to space, not for revenge, but to explore. The Tenth Doctor believed it recognised her as a fixed point in time, and the Doctor's actions in relation to Adelaide created the Dalek Time Squad, a fleet of time-sensitive Daleks who feared the Dark Times. These actions were ultimately reversed, but I'll be sure to cover their expansive adventures in a future separate video from the Archive of Islos to Fighting the Hond and the Time Lord Victorious. Ultimately, Davros and Khan's Dalek fleet was destroyed by a Metacrisis Doctor Donna, a hybrid of human and Time Lord DNA on both parts, with the Doctor's severed hand full of regeneration energy acting as a catalyst for the destruction of the Dalek race once again to the true Doctor's despair, sick to death of death itself. Three single Dalek drones survived the slaughter, finding a progenitor device which contained pure Dalek DNA. This was extrapolated and aided by the Doctor's testimony, a whole new race of pure Daleks were created, a new paradigm with their unorthodox designs and no-nonsense approach, killing the three Daleks that saved them almost immediately. 
This new paradigm escaped the Doctor and began reconstructing the Dalek race. They were part of an alliance that trapped the Doctor inside the Pandorica and the resulting rewritten timeline. Plus, they had even attempted to halt the evacuation of Earth in the far future, and one of these Supreme Daleks had its memory banks harvested by the 11th Doctor in the search for the silence, and in the early days of this new race of Daleks, an abomination was created. A good Dalek, which was destroyed alongside many of the newly created Paradigm forces. Ultimately though, these Daleks saw themselves as so much more superior than any Daleks before them, they ultimately failed to see the resurgence of Davros and his own Dalek Empire. Once more the Daleks had a civil war, with the Paradigm Daleks losing to the children of Davros. As this new empire was being forged, a parliament of the Daleks rose up, led by the elected mutant known as the Dalek Prime Minister. This parliament requested the help of the Predator of the Daleks, the Doctor, to destroy an asylum planet full of crazy Daleks so hate-fueled, ruthless or insane, the Daleks dared not decimate them. The 11th Doctor, Amy and Rory were transported to the planet and once the planet's defences were lowered by the human turned Dalek Osman Oswald, the parliament launched an attack to destroy the asylum. But not before Oswin wiped out all memory of the Doctor in the minds of every single Dalek. When the Doctor came back to their ship, he was bombarded with the first question, Doctor Who, by the entire parliament. He left shortly after, but not before taunting the bewildered Daleks that they never stop asking. But this small victory was short lived, as the Time Lord's reputation among the squids from Skaro was restored during the siege of Trenzalore, using information scavenged from the papal mainframe. Some say the remembrance of the Doctor drove the Prime Minister of the Daleks insane, resulting in it being declared unfit for leadership and being exterminated by the Supreme. The Doctor defended a gateway on Trenzalore for the Time War survivors on Gallifrey, unable to let them through without starting a war, but unable to leave the planet without it being destroyed by the raging armies of every alien armada you can name. While the other species attempted to sneak past the force field, the Daleks called for reinforcements, preparing for war. Eventually they attacked the mainframe, killing everyone before converting them into Dalek puppets. The Daleks managed to breach the force field and the siege of Trenzalore grew into a war, as the species orbiting the planet followed the Daleks through the force field. After much fighting, many of these species were killed or simply retreated. The Doctor and the mainframe's silent priests acted as the last line of defence against the Daleks, but they too were overpowered, and the Doctor, having used up all 12 of his regenerations, grew too old to continue fighting. With the resistance dealt with, the Daleks began looking for the Doctor in the town of Christmas, with Dalek fighter pods firing on the town and a huge flying saucer descending upon it. However, Clara Oswald pleaded to the Time Lords to grant the Doctor a new regeneration cycle, and the Doctor began regenerating into his 12th incarnation. The energy released was enough to destroy some of the attacking fighter pods, and the final burst destroyed the saucer. The shockwave blew apart the Daleks' ground forces, ending the war on Trenzalore. At some point in the future there was a combined galactic resistance formed to battle the Daleks and capture a damaged Dalek that was later named Rusty by the 12th Doctor. The resistance asked him to help fix Rusty as he had been turned good. The Doctor, Clara, Journey and two soldiers travelled into Rusty and located a crack in his power source that was spewing radiation and simply killing him. Losing one soldier along the way, the Doctor repaired the crack with his sonic screwdriver, but the radiation had been causing the Daleks change, and it turned evil again, breaking free of its restraints and calling in more Daleks to destroy the medical ship known as the Aristotle. The Doctor telepathically linked with the Dalek to get him to see the good in the universe through the Doctor. However, the beauty that Rusty saw was the destruction of the Daleks by the Doctor in the past, and realising that they were evil. Rusty turned on the Daleks, who were attacking the human resistance fighters, and slaughtered them. Telling the Doctor that he wasn't a good Dalek, but the Doctor was. Rusty ordered the Dalek flying saucer that was docked with the Aristotle to retreat, claiming that the humans had activated the ship's self-destruct, then left with them to continue his war against his own kind. The Doctor would go on to discover Davros, who was dying of really, really, really old age, and had his new empire of miscellaneous Daleks on a rebuilt Skaro. The Daleks and Davros were later given some of the Doctor's regeneration energy to be fashioned into Time Lord Dalek hybrids, but they were defeated when the Dalek city was destroyed by the decomposing Daleks in the sewers below the city, whom had also healed by the regeneration energy and revolted against the Daleks. The city was all but reduced to rubble in the midst of the chaos. 
Meanwhile on the planet Villengard, Rusty had spent millions of years destroying the Daleks, eventually having set himself in a tower where he stood watch, killing all the assassins sent by the rest of the Daleks to kill him. When the Doctor arrived, he convinced Rusty to help him learn about testimony, citing that helping him, in any way, would hurt the rest of the Daleks. With the information given, the Doctor departed, leaving Rusty to his revenge. The Daleks of course still existed, with the majority believing the Doctor had retired to a peaceful life on Derillium. however this was short-lived for the Time Lord. The size of the Empire of the Daleks at this stage in their story is hard to tell, however what we do know is they will be sure to return to fight another day, with either an army or one aggressive armed mutant, the universe may never be safe from the evil of the Daleks ever again. Their master plan of decimating all in their way, even their own kind and creator stands strong, with any planet targeted by the forces unlikely to be safe from the power of the Daleks, but as long as the Doctor is still out there, somewhere in the universe, I doubt the squids from Skaro will ever truly be victorious. That is the history of the Daleks, from the Thousand Year War and their genesis out towards the end of the universe as we know it. The Daleks are possibly the most determined force to ever evolve, the creepiest ever created, and the most exciting to see exterminate on screen. These icons of Doctor Who helped pave its way into the hearts of a nation thanks to the work of Terry Nation the real creator of the Daleks. The show experienced the success that allowed the history to be so in depth and well described across generations of creations. Of course there are and always will be Dalek stories I missed from audios and comics that are forever changing and of course the TV show as it continues to shine, however for now at least. This is the ultimate timeline of the Daleks remastered, a history of who, the icons that are the Daleks. Thank you very much for watching this absolutely huge video, an enormous and honest thank you if you really did enjoy this project the entire way through and watched it from start to finish. I know it was a lot to take in. If you have any thoughts or theories about all things Dalek and of course Doctor Who, then be sure to comment below and of course I would really love it if you hit that subscribe button to show your support and make sure you don't miss out on the rest of History of Who and lots more to come in 2021. With all that said, thanks again and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.